Beyond is the story of this young woman called Jodie Holmes. And uh, since the day she was born, she has a link with an invisible entity. It's, it's a presence around her. She doesn't know if it's a ghost or the spirit of someone who passed away. But this thing is always there, and they are tied together. You tell him what to do, and it happens. I don't tell Adam what to do. No one does. He's like a lion in a cage. We're tied together. He can't go away. That makes him really angry. It's not my fault. I want him to leave, too. It can be really scary sometimes. This thing is not exactly a pet or a power. This entity she calls Aiden uh, is really a person with his own personality. And this entity, you know, protects her and cares about her, but it also interferes with her life. Jody, it's over, Jody. It's over. It will never be over. The story itself is very huge, and there's, you know, incredible action. But there's also this, like, beautiful drama within it, and how she relates to herself and Aiden and other people in the world, and the journey she's going on to just be herself and be in control of her own life. While this has fantasy elements, one of the beauties of it is it's very hardcore. Here we have a better chance of understanding what's happening. We can find a way to protect you. Nobody can protect me. I like the basic idea of this gifted little girl growing up in this environment and the scientist bonding with her and becoming a surrogate father. I was interested in this idea of Hi, adults being enjoy. fascinated by this enjoy. little girl and what she can do and wanting. She's got a very interesting psychological profile for a kid her age, that's for sure. So there is a strange relationship between them uh, of a father to his daughter, but at the same time, the daughter has this power and the secrets, and she knows so much that Dawkins would like to discover. Not only am I a surrogate father, but I start to see how I can use her for my particular agenda. <laughs> I'm begging you, Jody, do this for me. It's a complicated relationship they have. There's lots of complexities of, uh, combination of love and betrayal between the two of them. Did you ever just stop and think about what I want? When she's 14, 15, 16, you know, she's living in a facility. She doesn't really have any friends. When she tries to, this entity often in in interferes. It interferes with her love life. I'm not yours, Aiden. I can have a relationship with whoever I want. This is my life. And she's just very, uh, very profoundly frustrated and annoyed because she can't just exist. I didn't ask to be different. I just want to go out and, and have friends and be like other girls my age. You'll never be like them. You need to get used to that. We learned through studying her that there are souls. We figure a way to contain them all and study them. Oh, OK, I'm recording. So trouble is coming. My character is a CIA agent um, that basically, you know, gets wind and understands what's going on with Jody and her powers and what she's sort of been. Yeah, I immediately want to get my hands on her and figure out how I can use her. I don't care what you think. I'm not going anywhere. You can tell the CIA to fuck off because I'm not going anywhere. Once we first meet, it's definitely not a pleasant, you know, meeting. She realizes why I'm there, and I'm, I'm not there for really great reasons for her, changing her life completely. It's your room. This is where you'll study and sleep for the next three years. The training starts tomorrow at 5 a.m. Don't be late. What interested me in the story is that, of course, not everyone has a link with an invisible entity, but we all have something uh, that we need to accept about ourselves, that we cannot change, and we need to live with that. And this is definitely the story of, of Jody and, and Aiden, this, this entity. I think it's, it's not about paranormal so much. It's about accepting who we are. I just wanted to go out. To go out and be like everyone else for once. I know. It's weird, because I think like, anyone can relate to that. Anyone can relate to um, getting rid of our own kind of personal demons to live and be truly present and free, you know.
So it's a very thought-provoking game, and the player has to make some very difficult choices. So it, it's a full journey that the player is going to go on, emotionally. When we start a project, um, I think especially with the games, it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to kind of fully understand the size of it and uh, the complexity of it because it's, it's something that you have to live and breathe. Games are just the same as films. You start off with stills or uh, the actual artwork that's drawn inspiration to them. Getting the same information as a film about the characters and their background and the colours of the game and the general this feel of it is how normally it starts. But it instantly sort of transpired that this was slightly more ambitious and this was slightly more interesting than other things we had looked at in the past. The, the way you tackle any of these things, you really try to know the life story of your character. And I, and I think that's why, you know, especially this game is so interesting because it is, you know, people ask, is it a film or is it a game? And there is no difference, not to me. You could sit there and watch it as a film. So, so the way of trying to musically tell a story is the same process. My first uh, meeting with David was when the themes were being presented to him. I don't know about you, but I find it very scary when you've put uh, you know, your heart and soul into writing a piece of music that, that this person has been writing this character for years and all of a sudden I've been invited into this world and, and been there for like a month and I'm now trying to say, well, this is this person's character. The Adam Page character to David, you know, is very personal and it's, um, and he's lived and breathed the development of that character. And like, I, the same, I'm sure, as if it had been a film, but with this game, it's, it's very personal. Look, this is what all good filmmakers have in common. Um, they have a vision of what they want to do, and they tell you about this vision. And as they tell me about the vision, I try to think, what is, the, what is it that they can't tell me? What is it that they can't do? What is it that they can't say elegantly in words or pictures? Or, um, and what is it that I can sort of bring to the party that is just going to knock their socks off and surprise them? And a good filmmaker will always let you do that. If you look at the, um, like the Three Dark Knight movies that uh, uh, we did with Chris, um, we really, like each one, we put everything in, all of us. Um, and went, okay, that's it, you know, th th can't possibly do another one. And then somebody would come up with like, well, maybe what if? <laughs> I do try to create an environment around me that lets people tell me their worst ideas, you know, because they're usually their most secret and private and most precious ideas and something cool will come from it. As games develop, as, as th this new art form develops, um, we can become more cinematic. And as we become more cinematic, we can actually go and surpass what we have in the cinema. And I think that's, that's interesting because one of, one of the reasons I really enjoy the whole gaming world is because we are looking for that next thing which be can become immersive, that can involve us, that can really, in a, in a way, be, uh, go beyond entertainment. What annoys a lot of gamers sometimes is constant themes being used all the time. Because unlike a film, uh, that your experience is an hour and a half, but with this game, some people sit there for five, six hours, and uh, they, they, you don't want to kill them with, with this theme that keeps appearing all the time. So I think what the challenge with this game was to try to figure out a way of um, musically telling a story and having development of the characters, but not necessarily uh, become it, be, make it be repetitive. 
you know, the thing is, is that unlike a film, the only time you actually fully understand, I think with music, what we've managed to actually do is when you have the time to sit and play the game. Because we don't fully uh, understand how much, you know, how it really will work out, especially with this game, because you're choosing different decisions constantly. And like some of the other games that we've worked on, you have a very clear vision of what the end story is. And with this, it's just so exciting because the story changes. So the music experience changes. So if Hans plays it tomorrow, he'll have a different experience musically and game-wise than I will. So it, it's always going to keep changing. My name is Nathan, Nathan Dawkins. I thought it would be a good idea for us to have a little chat, get to know each other a little better. David's been thinking about Beyond for a very long time, in fact, maybe 20 years. He made me read a short story he wrote when he was a teenager that was about a girl having a link with an entity and spatial abilities. Beyond was also about um, talking about death, I would say, in a different way. Um, I was confronted with the loss of someone in my family close to me and, and it was really a, a shocking experience, really, really brutal. I wanted to tell a different story and not talk about death the usual way, I would say, but really deal with death as uh, something that has a physical reality and that, that can be explained. Is he a ghost or a spirit of someone who passed away? I had the story in mind, I was starting to take notes and I'm used to um, look for pictures of actors. And the first image I found for this character of Judy was uh, a picture of Ellen. She looked really strong. She seemed to know what she wanted, but at the same time, there was something fragile and vulnerable in her eyes. And that was for me exactly the definition of Judy Holmes. As I was writing, I had more and more pictures of Ellen in my scripts, and, and after a while I realized that I was writing a role for Ellen. I've been fortunate to be working since I was pretty little and to really truly step into something that is <laughs> so new and so scary but also exciting. And I hadn't done something like this before, so uh, yeah, I was curious. As I liked the relationship, uh, of the uh, Dawkins character uh, to the Jody character. I like the arc of what happens to them, the fact that it takes over uh, 15 years. There are lots of um, possibilities okay. for lots of uh, complexity and lots of interesting uh, subtleties and uh, takes on the relationship. I didn't ask to be different. I just want to go out and, and have and be like other girls my age. You'll never be like them. You need to get used to that. David came to LA and we spent like an afternoon going through everything. And, um, you know, it's, you know, usually when you, you know, you go into a movie, you're dealing with this like a um, hundred-ish page script. And, you know, this is ultimately a 2,000 page script. I remember just being in my place with like these stacks of scripts and being like, how? Do I be how where does one begin here, you know? It's hard to keep track because of the interactive uh, aspects of the game, the striking go lots of different ways. That was something that was really hard for me to wrap my brain around as we're shooting. This shooting was a lot of pressure because of the presence of Alan Page and William Defoe. Uh, we knew we would have a limited time and, and that we, we wanted to be efficient. So uh, we worked maybe three, four months just preparing the sessions and making sure we know pretty much hour by hour what, what we would do and that everything would fit in the, in the schedule. When you come here, you just have all these cameras all around, but there is no set, no wardrobe. So you're just pretty much naked on set and you need to say, okay, give me your lines and, and make me believe in what you say. And when you look around, I want you to feel like you see something and you know where you are and you know what's going on around you. I can't make it! You can, Jimmy! Come on, jump! I'm gonna die! I know I'm gonna die! I don't think I realized when I signed up for it just like how much of an incredible experience this was gonna be as an actor. 
I mean, it's been like some kind of crazy acting boot camp or something, you know? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I should have never sent you in there. I was so afraid I had lost you. It was a year-end shooting, shooting pretty much every day. It was about 160 actors uh, on set. It's about four or five hours of dialogues. It's about 50,000 unique animations. It's about 15,000 shots, unique camera shots. So it's it's crazy amount of work. Because the player is making you know the choices of where they want the story to go, you you could be having essentially like four different conversations at once, and you know you're kind of filming it all, but you're filming it linearly, you know. So it's such an interesting thing, and you just you just do it. It's difficult, but you need to understand this is a great opportunity for you. No one can tell me what to do with my life. I don't care what you think. I'm not going anywhere. You can tell the CIA to fuck off because I'm not going anywhere. It's like any movie or working with any great director. You want to, you want to um, realize their vision. That the pleasure for me uh, as an actor is not interpreting something, it's really becoming the material. And it really is serving someone's vision and then making it my vision. And it excites you because you, um, you have new energy when you um, have a shift of understanding or, a sh or you catch someone else's passion. I was here to help actors to understand what point in the story there were, in what emotional state the character was at the time, and what's going on around them. So it was a very, very, very interesting uh, work, I think, for, for any director, and I really enjoyed it.